What's up kids, Chris Williams here. Let's talk about turning your vision into strategy. So the vision that you've got in your head for your agency, we get a lot of questions about this as I talk to you guys one-on-one -on, -one on the phone calls or in the group here. We get a lot of questions about exactly how that works. How do I have to get what's in my head? I've got this amazing thing I wanna do and how do I actually turn that into something real and practical that I can execute on a daily basis to see that vision become a reality. And that takes a couple of things that are really important. We're gonna go through those today. So let me just get set up here and make sure that I am actually on and y'all can hear me. Um, yep, there we go, awesome, thumbs up, perfect. Matt, what's up, great to see you. That really helps me make sure that my audio is on. Hey, uh, Matt and Mike, great to see you guys both. If you, if you hear the audio skipping or if the video doesn't come out right, please just keep lining up the messages there. Last time we had a little issue with that, and I want to make sure we don't do that again this time. All right, so let's do this. Let's just jump in here and get this thing going right here. I'm going to answer questions best I can, so if you have questions, just load them up in the uh, in the comments there, and I'll, I'll try to take them as they come if they're relevant. Um, I've got a couple questions from comments yesterday um, that I'll catch at the very end to make sure we're up to date on all that. Okay, so let's just jump right in here. There's a couple things you gotta think through as you're as you're taking your vision. And before we do that, we just give me a heads up or a thumbs up if this says if this says hi the right way and it's not backwards. Um, just give me a thumbs up. Sometimes I actually get started on these things and I find out I'm writing and the screen reverses itself the whole time. So just make sure that says hi and it's not backwards. Um, we good? Okay. Yes. I think we're good. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So. Let's talk vision and how you actually turn the vision that's in your head and get it to where you can actually use it. Okay, so all of us have these things in our head. So we're agency owners, right? And there's all these light bulbs. Let's see if I'm on the screen. There we go. There's all these light bulbs just going off in our head. We're constantly thinking of things that make us happy, right? And it, it could be the clients you want to serve. It could be the talent you have. It could be the thing that you know you're best at better than anybody else. It could be the thing that you know is gonna make you the most money or give you the freedom you need and you wanna grow a business and you actually want that to become something. It could be um, freedom to impact a community or your children or your family in some special way. There's lots of things that make us as creatives actually wanna jump in and do what we do and own agencies. That's not the same for everybody. And I used to think, oh, people have to be like me and I'd kind of judge a little bit on what drives another agency owner to do what they do, but it is so vastly different. And it's extremely different, particularly with creative agency owners. We're all very individualistic. We're, we're often dreamers. We're creatives, right? We have things in our heads and we want to see those things come out and become real. We want to tell that story. We want to see it unfold on paper or on screen or in a video or whatever our medium is, right? So these are the things that are popping in our head. The, the thing to do, and here's what gets challenging for a lot of us, is we have to actually start turning these ideas and grouping them. Now, they're hard to group, but in order to get a vision into some sort of a strategy, which is going to include like actual task lists, things that we can actually check off and get done, right? In order to get this into something that's very concrete, there's a huge divide here, okay? That divide is really, really hard to jump, but it's doable. Let me walk you through how it works. So let me just erase this for a second. And let's talk. Did, did y'all know my eraser actually sticks to the whiteboard? I found that out today. It fell off the, the, the shelf and all of a sudden my eraser is magnetic. Isn't that brilliant? So the I wish I had invented that, right? Somebody made a lot of money. It wasn't me on that one. So we got to start grouping as creative agency owners. We have to start grouping what's going on in our heads. Okay. There's whatever these things are. If it's, let's say that this down here, I'm going to go ahead and just like put squares around some. So these squares are going to represent, you know, I want time with my kids. This is me. I want time with my kids. I want time with Jill. I want free time and head space in my life. All right. I want, I have a dog named Blue, loves spending time with Blue. Blue's in a lot of these videos because he just wanders through um, the studio and, and he shows up on videos. Love that stuff. I want time to travel, okay? Those are all similar, right? So I'm grouping them based on their commonalities. So 
This is a really easy way to do this. These are all time oriented. Now let's use circles as money. So we're going to use squares this time. This is just an example. You do this however you want to. We'll use circles as money. Let's say that I also, I've got time to travel, but I also want enough money to travel. So Jill and I and our kids, we have five kids, we um, spent quite a bit of time this summer just roaming and wandering from northern UK down to the Greek Isles through all those countries um, just weeks on end and had just a blast. So much fun, but I had to have time and I had to have money to pull that off. So I want my agency to produce those things for me, right? I gotta have money to pay my bills, house, cars, whatever you have. I gotta have money to buy dog food for Blue, wherever Blue was in the mix. You get the idea, time and money. I also have to have money to pay my staff and run my agency, right? There's, there's expenses that come, not just personal, but also in business. Make sure you list all those down. So another way to do this is you could pull up a spreadsheet or you could pull up a document and you could actually start listing down things like, Here's what I have to take care of. I have these responsibilities that are financial responsibilities, right? And I have these goals that are time-oriented goals, right? Now, this might not be all everything on the list. You might have things that are very specific to just you. You might want to say, I also want to pursue education, or I want to pursue a certain number of certifications, or I want to pursue... Um, uh, an interest like I used to play the ukulele a lot and I wanted to be able to do that a lot. I want to make sure I had the right connections, training, things like that. Whatever it is that your pursuit is, list them down there and ultimately they're going to take some amount of time or money. Think about it that way. Those are the resources you have. You say, yeah, but Chris playing the ukulele, it takes time. Does it really take money? I mean, ukulele is 60 bucks. Yeah. If you want to get a, a, a trainer, somebody to help me learn ukulele faster, that takes money. Also, if I'm going to take time to play the ukulele, I'll get off this example in a second, then I have to make sure that I've actually created enough time to play the ukulele, which costs me money because I'm not producing in my agency, right? Okay, so for me, time and money were big deals. They will be for you too. Those are it's an easy way to calculate stuff. Here's the catch. It's often pretty easy for agency owners to create money with their time, all right? There's a seesaw going on here, and um, let's say this is the seesaw. There's the middle, right? And we have time over here. You can see it's a little lower. And we have money over here. So as we make more money, we end up having less time, okay? The time spend, we spend it on making money. Or you can go the other way around. We can hire someone, right, and spend a little more money. We can make the money side go down. We don't have as much money now but we have time because we hired somebody to help us. The trick is figuring out how to do both of those. You want your time to get more free and your money to go up at the same time. Okay, so far so good. Let me know if you got questions as we're going. If I lose you, I don't want to lose you, so let me know if you have questions. Um, okay, I'm going to erase this. We're going to go to the next set. We're going to save this concept right down here, a list of things that take time and money. So let's just erase this. Okay, cool. It's a magnet thing. That's just so fun. Okay, so we have our list of things up here that take money, money responsibilities, money goals, money wants, retirement, house, car, vacation money, money to send kids to a certain school, whatever it may be. We also have time. I want to. I'm going to start using a lot less time. I don't want to work. I used to work 14 hour days. It was insane. Um, constantly just trying to produce, produce, produce to to make enough money, right? So I want to make my time go down. But these things all take time. It takes time to create. It takes time to find new clients. It takes time to actually teach staff what to do. If I have to get staff, it takes time to do that. There's all these time constraints here. Or I want time with my family, or I want time to travel, or I want time to paddleboard, or whatever it is for you. So you've got time and money goals. Here's the thing you have to do. we got to make sure that we start turning these into a real solid picture. So this picture has to go from something very ethereal in our heads of, oh, I wish I could travel more. Saw somebody traveling in the Caribbean this summer and I wish I could do that. Well, how do you actually do that, okay? Define it. If you wanna go, for instance, when we first started traveling big, um, this was, um, I, I think, through years in trips because we love to take long trips. So our first long trip um, was in California six years ago, I guess. 
um, meaning long more than two or three weeks. Um, and so we took the summer and started working our way down the coast of California, Northern California to Southern California. Um, we took five or six weeks doing that. So I calculated how much time I wanted to spend every day working or how much time I wanted free, right? I wanted to spend at that time, I wanted to spend a max of two hours per day working. I wanted to get up six in the morning, get my work out of the way. And then about eight o'clock in the morning, the kids are getting up and Jill and I would be able to go and just cruise and play and have fun all day and the rest of the night in California. That was my goal. I also knew, so I knew I had two hours a day um, to, to work. And then that was one thing I had to accomplish. And then I also had to accomplish a dollar amount. Now let's talk about this dollar amount. This is really interesting. You can jump out there, grab a spreadsheet or something, get a budget. If you just go to Google Sheets, you can find a, sh a spreadsheet that does a budget for you. And you can just put in what you think you spend. Don't, don't get all detailed about how much you spend on your cable and how much you spend on your cell phone. How much do you spend per month? What does it cost you to live in your current lifestyle, in your town, in your home or apartment, whatever you have right now? What does it cost? So jump in there and figure that out. Then figure out which of those things. So for me, traveling, which of those expenses would go away once I started traveling. So for me, I wanted to be able to be on the road all summer. And so I knew that I wasn't gonna have to pay for, a, like our air conditioning bill, for instance, would go down significantly because our house would be closed up and we could crank the thermostat up and be a little, be a little warm in the house, no big deal. Things like that. What could you cut out of your budget if you went to accomplish something else? So for me, it was travel, it was easy to cut home expenses out. Turns out about 33%, 34% of our personal budget is non-existent when we're on the road. Yes, we take it with us. We take our groceries with us. We take a lot of those things with us and we have to still spend it somewhere else. But it's not like I'm just adding 100% of that cost to it when I travel. Whatever your example is, you can figure that out. Take your daily expenses for your home and your agency and divide that, like your monthly expenses, sorry, your monthly expenses, divide it by the day. So what is the dollar amount per day, all right? That is so, so important. What's the dollar amount per day that you have to spend, okay? So everybody has a different number there, but you can divide that by two ways. You can either make it a 20 to 22 day number because most months have 20 to 22 working days in them per month, or you can say I'm gonna divide it by 30 days and just kind of go with the average, including the weekends. I do it by 20 days a month because I wanna make in 20 days that's February, the shortest month you got to work with. This month, actually, I want to make all the money I got to make every day, 20 days per month. I don't have to worry about making money or keeping up with stuff on the weekends. You'll notice that I completely check out of social media on the weekends. Um, I, can, I check out of my agency. I am done. My staff is done. We don't work on the weekends. So I want to make my money five days a week. Okay. How much money do I have to make per day? Figure that number out. So I want to work two hours a day and each day I have to make that much money. All right. So that could be $1,000 a day. If you need $20,000 a month, it could be $5,000 a day. If you need um, $100,000 per month, it could be a $100 a day if you need $2,000 a month. Whatever it is for you, find your number and work towards that. So we've got our ideas out. We listed them out, what we want to do with our time and our money and what kind of resources we need. I want to be able to work two hours a day. I want the rest free. I want to be able to make X number of dollars per day in 20 days per month and that accomplishes my goals so far so good we've taken the vision this thing we have that we want to create or lifestyle we want to have or whatever we turn it into a very fixed dollar and time amounts and then we have to go out and start producing what's up melissa great to see you then we have to go out and start producing um the the money in that amount of time per day and that comes down to a simple formula, which I'm going to erase all of this for a second. We'll keep our time and our money check boxes up there. I have to figure out, based on everything we just went through, I gotta figure out what I need per day in clients, right? I've gotta make this much money per day. So I need either a dollar amount that a client brings in or a project, whatever your creative agency produces. 
if it's clients, if it's hours, if it's project-based, if it's um, service-based, if it's an actual product, whatever it is, we can talk through all the different ways that can work for you. But I have to produce either a certain dollar amount of a client or and or a number of clients. So if I have to produce $100, let's say $1,000 a day there, just for example, then I could say this is, this means I have to make $100 a day, I mean $100 for 10 clients, right? I have to serve that many clients at $100, or I could have a $1,000 um, deal, project, client, whatever per day, and only have one of those, right? So I can kind of work the math that way. Or I could have one client a month that produces $20,000, and I just work 20 days in a row to, to earn that money. You see how it plays out, all right? Obviously, lots of nuances to that. And is a one client $20,000 a month a good month for you? Probably not. That's pretty insecure. You don't want all your eggs in one basket. We can get into all that another time. But you get the point here. What, what does my agency look like in my current experience with the clients I already have that I have, I have picked up over the past year or two? What dollar amount do they bring in and how many of those do I have to have going to give me either per day or per month the dollar amount I need? Okay, that's number one. And then I got to start thinking backwards and start understanding what has to go into that kind of work to get that done, right? Am I physically capable of doing that much work myself? I've only got two hours a day to work with, right? That's my goal. Am I capable of doing that much production in that much time? If I'm not, a couple things can change. There's some variables. Let's get a different color out here for our variables. All right. Let's just list them out right in here, okay? Um, we're going to have the, um, the dollar per deal. So how much money do I make per client or per deal or per project or whatever, right? So the, the profitability is another way to say that of each deal. Um, I can vary that by the number of deals. I can vary this by hours worked. So I've got these, these things pulling against each other, right? Hours worked, how much each deal is worth, number of deals I can produce. Somewhere in here is this perfect little balance where I might not be able to accomplish these things, but with the right team or the right processes I can. So obviously, if I've got really poorly financed deals, I need to figure out in my sales pitch, in the offer I'm making, how do I increase the dollar amount of this deal? Because the higher up I can crank that, the fewer deals I have to have, which means I don't have to have as many deals, and I don't have to work as many hours, okay? Number of deals. This maxes out. This is a, this is a system and personnel thing. I can handle more deals with more systems and more people, okay? And then hours worked. I can decrease the hours I worked if I have more systems and more people. So if you if you say this is that perfect thing we have right here in the middle, remember our, our initial slide that we showed, our initial drawing, we had this me happy, happy owner of my agency here, all these ideas I had going on. I'm getting pulled in different directions, all right? Getting stretched by the hours I'm working, stretched by the numbers of deals I have to do. They're all pulling me apart, right? stretched by the deal value that's in there, the, the, the price I'm charging. You need to turn this around and the hours you're working needs to come back to you. Instead of going away from you, the, the value and the profit margin per deal needs to come to you. The number of deals that's coming in need to be the right one for you and the hours work need to be the right one for you and processes and people build that for you simple processes and simple staffing with wonderful staff and we can show you how to get all that stuff. This works for you because then all of a sudden your hours can go down with staffing and processes. Honestly, you can decrease a lot of your work hours right now with better processes, I promise, I promise. Even if you think you're an amazing process person, just learning from other amazing process people, I learn stuff all the time I'm like, oh my gosh, I just saved so much time. Same with the number of deals. There's simple ways to increase deal flow without increasing the hours that you're working, okay? That's, again, a process and a people thing, and so, so doable. It's so, so doable. You can, you can do this stuff, right? 
And then the, I, I've done it. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not just trying to say it over and over again. Like, I want you to really understand how easy it is and how straightforward it is to increase the deal flow with a higher profit margin and decrease the hours that it takes you to actually accomplish the work or the sales or the marketing of it or whatever piece you love doing. If you don't love the piece of it, I'll source to somebody else. We can show you how to do that. But it's so doable. You see so many people online touting their, their they made you know $100,000 in 90 days or they did this funnel and all of a sudden became a billionaire or they're parked in front of their Lamborghini or whatever they're doing. Awesome, good for them. You know what's going on there is not that they became a bazillionaire in 90 days. It's that they took years figuring out systems and processes and people to make that happen. It's not the one and done funnel that makes that happen. It's the processes and the people that, that educate and influence that funnel that took a long time to get there. But the processes and people are what make it happen. There are a lot of things that I do in my agency that, that serve my clients well and serve me well that I don't figure out because I don't want to spend the hours and I don't want to spend um, time distracting myself from deal flow. I just want to pay someone else who understands how to do that and they keep my hours down. Yeah, it costs me a little money, but I know how to increase the profit margins and my deal flow and I can increase that way faster than they can spend my money getting stuff done for me. So I outsource a lot of things and I keep my hours way down and I focus on what I'm best at. If you're best at creating and the art of what you do, then focus on what you're best at and find other people who are better at bringing you new deals. If you're amazing at sales or amazing at marketing, then go do your marketing thing. Let someone else do the creation of the actual product you deliver. If you're good at all those things and you love it, and I know I talk to a lot of folks in this group and they, you'll love it. I'm that way too. I love figuring something else new out and I just want to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And I don't want to hand things off sometimes. I had to get over that, right? Because I could never accomplish my vision if my vision was connected to me as someone who had a limited number of hours and a limited number of, um, of, of dollars per day. It really comes down to the dollars you have per day. I'm going to check my calendar and then jump into q and I'm checking my calendar just to make sure I'm not messing anything up. Um, there's somebody in this community that I am promised to talk to in just a little bit. I think I'm totally okay. So if you have questions, now's the time to answer them. Ask them for everybody else. Everybody learns from these questions. Questions are the best because questions give all of us. Okay, i got 30 more minutes. I'm good. Um, questions give all of us a chance to really understand what's going on. Um, and, and somebody else is probably not thinking of the question you're thinking of and so help educate them. So a couple of questions that came in yesterday about this topic that I want to get to. Um, one is the general concept of how this works. If you're just jumping in, go back and check that out. Um, what's up, Robert? It's good to see you. Um, and we'll make sure that, that this is consistent for you and you can understand the whole process. But um, all right, a question on, uh, let me see, one I got sent to me in a message yesterday. Um, struggling with getting the vision out of um, my head and into actionable steps. It's complicated. There's lots of things going on. It seems overwhelming. What are the priorities? Good question. Priorities for you come down to a couple different things, all right? So... It depends on what you want to accomplish. Again, go back to the first of this video. What you want to accomplish, if it's if it's priority of spending, for instance, for me, again, I mentioned time with family. For me, it was time with family and travel with family. So I built an agency, in a sense, a lifestyle agency, around what I wanted to accomplish, which included having long stretches of free time and enough resources to come in to allow me to enjoy those stretches of free time traveling, okay? So I wanted time with my kids. I want to be able to travel with my kids. Some people, their priorities are building an enormous agency. They want to have a huge operation and a big staff and, and lots of things going on. That's the way they're wired. That's awesome. Good for you. And so you would prioritize things that allow you to start scaling up and hiring staff and building systems and, and prioritizing the things that build that machine for you. Some people, their priority is, is the actual creation. They want to sit there with their pen and actually create art. I think that is amazing. Artists truly are magicians. They give life to our cultures. So if that's your thing, awesome. Learn 
some simple strategies that allow you to build processes and people to drive those processes that help you grow, bring in the deals, increase your profit margins without you having to do it. That way you can create the art. So it really depends. Prioritize though what your passion is and then learn how to put simple systems and people in place to take care of the other parts of the practice of your agency that need to have um, that stuff going on. Okay, hope that hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, let me refresh my screen up here so I can see one more question. Um, hang on, here we go. Okay, so um, here's a question from a VA conversation a few days ago. I'll make sure I hit that one. Um, hey Chris, this question relates to more of the last live you did on hiring a VA. How do you go about, by the way, any questions Q&A after these lives is fair game, it doesn't have to be on topic, so great. How do you go about the tax situation when it comes down to having employees outside the U.S.? Do you still send them a W-2? Would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so for me, um, we don't have any, we don't have any W-2 employees, okay? Our entire team is 1099, or independent contractors. So none of my team are actually employees of my company. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is we really value, myself and my entire team, we really value the freedom that comes with, with being independent. And so I want my staff to experience the freedoms that I get to experience. I think that's really cool and really fun. So we try to make sure people get to set their own hours and we do our team structures that way. Um, when it comes to stateside folks that work for us, I mean, a lot of these folks were their exclusive, um, were their exclusive gig, but they're still independent contractors. So for the folks who are stateside, we definitely um, take care of that's a 1099 issue, depends on how you pay them. I'm not a CPA, don't take tax advice, legal advice from me, but my CPA has informed me that if they're paid via credit card or with a business PayPal account, something that's already sending them the tax statement, then that's taken care of. If they're sent um, money that's more like cash or money order or something that's not trackable, I think even some of the PayPal payment structures are not set up for the 1099 process, then you need to take care of that yourself. If they're overseas internationals, um, then I don't believe that you have to send a 1099 to them because their tax structure is different. That's my understanding. If you know something different, let me know. Um, but again, this is not a tax or legal forum. But no, for our international folks who work with us, um, they take care of their own money and reporting their taxes on their turf in their way. It just shows up on our books as a contract cost for services. Um, it's a cost of our doing business, but it's it, how they report their income in another country is, is up to them. So that's my understanding. Good question. Hope that helps. Let me see if there's any other questions about the VA thing that are coming in on this comment thread or messages, I think that we are good. So there you go. Hope that helps from the other comments and questions we had previously on how to turn your vision into a strategic plan. I know I got into a few nuances. I know there's a lot of other things you could think of there, but bottom line is think through real clearly what your vision is and what it really costs in the terms of time and money. And then Go back to your agency and create an agency that allows you to have the time and the money that you need. And we talk through kind of the nuances and things that pull back and forth and really create the stresses between time and money and a few simple strategies for you to be able to overcome that. Hope that helps. Reach out with questions. Love your comments. Love your questions. Love all the feedback we get on phone calls that we have with you guys. And jump in there and let's work it out and um, add value to each other and build our agencies together. You can do this. You can be an amazing agency owner with the lifestyle you want, with the agency you want. I know staff are stressful sometimes. You can figure that out. I've done it. You can too. I have the best staff, amazing staff now. It's not because I just found and got lucky with amazing people. Yes, my staff are amazing people, but it's because we're very intentional about how to build that and how to make that work with lots of processes and structure in place that you and your staff can do in a very simple basis and you can make it work for you and for them. Okay, that is it for today, guys and girls. See y'all soon. Just making sure there's no other questions. I don't wanna leave anybody out. I think we're good to go. Y'all have a fantastic day. Talk to you soon. Bye.